hello everybody and welcome back to my vlog to my channel i apologize now for the overall quality of this for the video the video capture software that i was using has now decided i can't use it anymore until i get the professional version i have an older version of professional uh, debut uh, video capture on an old hard drive and i shall seek that out later so i'm not paying another 30 pounds for this software I'll see that out later. We'll get better videos from there. But I just wanted to show you this. So this is a loopback test with, and I'm using the box at the moment as a stand, but with this Sound Blaster AE9 from Creative. It's lovely. It's good. But the problem is, is between this and this is a big old long wire, which plugs into this bit here. Now, for most things, that's not a problem. But when you're trying to do loopback um, and you want to do audio measurements with it, which is, you know, I don't play on the games anymore. I've got a sort of gaming rig underneath this desk, but it's, it's you know, it's uh, I don't really play on it anymore. But that's what I bought the sound card for. I thought, yeah, it's got great numbers to it and it'll be good, but I didn't think it through completely. And now I realize that having that big distance between the auxiliary input on the back of this and the outputs here is a problem, all right? It is a problem. Uh, if that wire at the back was all coiled up nice and tight to it, it probably wouldn't be so bad, but it's not. It's outstretched and that doesn't work very well for what we want. So it's being used as a box for now. Uh, creative has said that I can send it back, which is nice. Uh, but I was trying to say that I was going to buy a, an X5. But I got something for doing the job that I wanted to, I consider to be better. So this is what you get with that. We're going to zoom into the numbers because um, it might be easier for me to do it like this. So let's look at it like this. All right, everything's going as close as we can to the calibration of 0 0.03 uh, dBFS. Okay, so that's the total harmonic distortion. And that's total harmonic distortion plus a noise. Now, if you run this down to negative uh, 20, and we're not pushing full power, the, no the numbers do look much better. They do look much better, and most people wouldn't be running this to such a high uh, number anyway. And if you can see here, look, we got minus 99.96 dB on the three kilohertz. I thought I'd show that uh, because you can almost see coming against here, this is 80 minus 80 dB, uh, which explains these numbers here. All right, so now we're gonna look at um, another that I got, which was this. I'm probably better off just backing that out a bit. This uh, Focusrite Scarlet 212. This is the fourth generation um, for the artist. Again, I didn't buy it because I want to be a singer-songwriter or play any musical instruments or anything like that. I just thought I wanted to check it and just see what it was going to be like. Uh, let me put that down. And this is the result from that one. Let me put it there. And as you can see, much better if we just go straight into that three kilohertz over here. Uh, you can see down here it's uh, minus 109.3 dB. Let me just zoom in for that and we can look at those. Got as close as I could to the um, minus three dBFS. It's a little bit twitchy on the gain because the gain on that particular knob on it is there's a lot of gain. I think it's 69 dB. It's got a gain, and so you tweak it a little tiny bit. We're going up to, you know, it was that's as close as I could get it. But still, again, look at the THD and the noise look. And the THD, that's nice. We've got three zeros after the point. Lovely, lovely. And even with the noise there, we got a two zeros, one line, you know, very close to that. Uh, what we want and that's for that now this costs 274 pounds all in with the with the delivery and such that's a lot of money a lot of money that cost 200 and that I'm sorry that was 174 pounds that was the cheapest I could find on eBay 
uh, even on uh, uh, they're normally around about 200 pounds but uh, 174 pounds was the cheapest I could find it now the one that wins the one that wins have another look at those numbers on the old uh, the focus right scarlet 2 i2 it's uh, pretty darn good but the one that actually wins is the one that's actually on now and this here if we just look just again at the the winning one there on the three uh, kilohertz minus 109 or 109 and then here we've got minus 122.12 and our numbers again are very nice for this. That's what we're talking about. That's nice. And this card that's in there cost me £30. I'm going to admit it's a second hand card, but it cost me £30. What card is it, you might ask? Whoa, £30. Yes, you could set up your rig like this. You could have a nice little test scenario like this. Um, and it's a Exona. Zona. I'm going to put it up on the screen here. Uh, Zona DX2. £30, that's what it cost me. Look, you can see it there. I bought that and you bought this item. Uh, £30. And so I've decided this is what I'm going to be using. All right, this is what I'm going to be using for taking the measurements because um, even this 2K, where's the keyboard for this? Even the 2K there, oh, let's just go drop down, is uh, minus 1.1638. And these numbers down here are absolutely lovely. So that's it, I just wanted to show you very quickly. I'm going to tell you now as well that... Um, the cables do make a difference, even if you get a long wire, make sure you coil it up nice and tight and don't be holding it when you take your measurements because that will introduce some noise. This is using a small cable. Um, I've used several small cables and they all seem to turn it the same, but that's, that's how you want to do it with this anyway, when you're doing a loop back. So all you're trying to do is, well, let me just get this sorted out, is benchmark. Um, in actual fact, we've got some benchmark results as well, or right mark results. Let me have a quick little look in here. You can see all the measurements I've been taking, and you can see them all down here as well. And you can see them here, where we've got uh, the onboard sound cards, uh, cable tests for the Sound Blaster A9 with the RCAs, onboard with the RCAs, and all this down here. But what we got here as well, is the onboard for the RMMA. Let me just put this up for you. For those who like the numbers, I'm gonna make that bigger and somehow, here we go, make that bigger. So for those who like those numbers, we can see here, I've done them at different uh, bits and frequencies, 16 bit 48 kilohertz, 16 bit 96, 16 bit 192. 24-bit, 48, 24-bit, you know, you can look over this yourself, but yeah, see the frequency response, we get to see the noise uh, levels, and this is for the onboard. So the onboard is my sound card that's built into my main board, and I'm using a, it's an Asus uh, B450 Tomahawk, all right? But look at the time total harmonic distortion. And this is running this. This, when you do the test on this, you do it as close as you can to minus one dBm, one minus one dB. So this, you know, looks again pretty good, pretty good, pretty good. Uh, the stereo crosstalk bit doesn't look as good when I show you the other ones. Uh, but there, you can look look at look through this i think it's the 2448 that works out to be the best overall pretty much uh, and on the 16 bit that doesn't look too bad at all all right so that's that one now i wonder if i can go straight to the next one i'm not sure if i can help yeah, we'll do it down here so now we we'll look at the focus right 
uh, and we're going to have that one as close as we can to there. So this is the onboard still. Let's get rid of that. Where's the focus right gone? There it is. And here we go. So again, it's pushing it to that. Um, uh, as close to one minus one dB as possible, and so this is. Uh, but this is at uh, minus three point one on there. The reason why that is is again, it's very, very sensitive on the old gain. On the on the gain here, on the big volume control, all good. But on this one, very very sensitive, very very hard to get it in the right place. Uh, crosstalks better. And the noise floor is better, as you can see, we get up to this sort of area here for the 24 bits. And the noise floor is better. This is a little addition. Um, because, because I didn't test it in this mode, I've done a test. 24 bit, 176, and that would be 0.4 kilohertz. And it gives us a much better... Um, a much better result. We've got a noise level now of um, minus 115, dynamic range 115.6, and total harmonic distortion 0 0.00068, and the um, with the noise intermodulation, and the noise 0 0.0099. Still not quite as good. As a as the sound card zona, but still a much better results than what we were seeing uh, on the other slide on the other on the other output. I thought I'd better just add that. Now you get to see what this um, ASUS zona uh, is. Uh, with 16 bit 48. Look at the look at the um, look at the difference. Look at the cross talk as well. Stereo cross talk. How far that is down. Uh, minus 95, minus 94, minus 101, uh, much better. I didn't do it on the 32 bit because it doesn't have any um, um, specifications for its own 32 bit. Because it doesn't do it, it does it at 24 to 192 kilohertz. And this is lovely. And this is lovely. And again, we get to see pretty much where it's working the best. Uh, 24 bit 96, I would say. Personally, mm, between there and there, 24 bit 48, but still very, very good. Very, very good. And it out, oh, and it, you know, it beats the other two. So there you go. 29 pounds, second hand sound card. Absolute brilliant. I'm not listening to it for sound. I expect it to be very good, but that's not what I bought it for. I bought it for to do these tests. I wanted to look with a lower noise floor and um, a bit more resolution. And now we can have a 24 bit resolution. Beautiful. Right, that's it. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed that and I'll uh, catch you in the next one. Bye bye.